do we of us? Um, that's fine. That the the pictures of us will just yeah stay there and yeah we've got the presentation there. Yep. Wow. Ooh, okay. Here we go. So this is uh, this is what the flat Earth projection looks like, the plan view, and you see Antarctica is um, the circumference there on the outside um, circling the whole Earth. That's what we call the South Pole, and this yeah. is why this is why um, countless. Uh, um, sailors that have tried to circumnavigate Antarctica have spent years doing so, including Captain Cook. He spent, um, I think, nearly four years and he logged uh, 60 to 70,000 miles and he still did not completely circumnavigate Antarctica. Reason being is because <laughs> it's because um, it's longer than it's probably about seventy five thousand eight eighty five or between seventy five and eighty five thousand in um, in circumference. Um, and it was a little island on the bottom of a ball, Santos. It would only take a, a short time to circumnavigate. If it's just a little icy island at the bottom of a ball, it shouldn't take that long, right? Well, it would take about, um, think about it, how long would it take to do, uh, to um, travel 12,000 kilometres? You'd probably do it in about six weeks. You should be able to, you know, do it now anyway. In modern times, they should be able to do it. Um, they should be able to fly around it in a, um, in a, in a jet and, and film the whole thing. They don't and they won't because they can't. Um, <laughs> As, as we will see, this is, this is quite a different world in which we live. We live in quite a different world to how the materialist evolution, Darwinian evolution model types are painting for us. They have no idea, no idea at all. At least what you will see in today's presentation, you will come closer to the truth than you will ever, ever be because, uh, have been, because... Um, we need to marry syncretism with the flat earth model and because syncretism it subscribes to the ancient cosmologies and the ancient cosmologies will teach us how uh, how the universe verses are created and um, where it is that we live this is um, the sun and the moon in their circles above the earth it appears at this um, uh, point they are somewhere in the middle this looks like they are somewhere in the uh, equator region it doesn't look like um, it's high above Australia there on the Tropic of Capricorn and it doesn't look uh, uh, as tight enough of a circle to be at the Tropic of um, Cancer Cancer is much much smaller of a circle there is the um, Gleason map. I've ordered this. Um, I should have had it in the mail weeks ago, but um, it keeps going to the wrong address. <laughs> and the guy at um, at the uh, uh, location where they make print these uh, maps, he's getting very frustrated. He's had it come back to him three times. But this is the um, this is the true map of the Earth that we uh, live on. Uh, I it's want to get flat. One, so you can buy them still, Santos. Yeah, I I bought the big one. It's um about one hundred and ten dollars, and it has uh, all of this. Um, what's called it's the um, equidistant azimuthal proje projection. So equidistant azimuthal. Um, that's what it's called. It's you know the pl uh, flat Earth is basically just a, a simplified way of describing the planet on which we live planet. <laughs> yes and it is that's what planet means it means plane mm -hmm. and so what you see here this is very very telling this uh, cartoon like um, depiction of the um, the cosmos you see the spheres in which we live we live in these um, uh, spheres there are ten of them as they teach in um, Kabbalah the ten sephiroth the tree of ten sephiroth and they are concentric circles okay so i won't dwell on them um so much right now but this is um 
a depiction of of these spheres and this is not a correct one by the way um what they've done here is they've put the flat earth down here and um and yeah, above yeah. that they've put the uh, a dome and they call it a, a a solid dome um now i'm this is wrong it's this is not right it's it's not correct um, especially the fact that they've put the stars in there. All the fixed stars do not belong to that first sphere. This dome-like structure called the firmament does not belong here. It belongs in the eighth sphere. There are yeah. seven, yeah, there are seven spheres before that sphere. Okay, and so, but um, this is more or less correct, and it shows. Notice those three uh, layers underneath the flat earth there. You notice the green layers below? Yeah. Right. There are seven more of these planets under our earth. Okay, so um, it's an octave system. Our earth is the topmost, and um, below that are seven um, inferior gross planets. Now, the seven superior planets, they are Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And they are not planets. They are stars. Okay, those, the Sun and the Moon are called luminaries. Yeah. And, and the so-called planets, Venus, Mercury, etc., those are stars. They are luminous bodies. Astronauts with physical bodies cannot go there. You can't go to Mars. Now, these people who think they've gone to Mars, they've gone somewhere, yes, <laughs> but they haven't gone to Mars because you, you can't go to Mars as a physical body, not these bodies. So um, astronauts are telling poo-poos and so are the people who believe they've gone to Mars and back and what have you. Um, they're not telling direct lies because they do believe they went to Mars because they were told they went to Mars. Yeah, they but were they're actually somewhere, right? There's a colony somewhere, but is that is that on one of the inferior Earths? Would you say? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's it's um, at the very least, it's one of those seven planets that resembles Mars in the higher octave. Right. Okay. Now. I, I probably should wait for some further slides before I go into this because um, people need to see the structure of the heavens according to the ancients before I, you know, before I jump in and preempt um, the 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 true wisdom with my own, you know, clouding and my own um, very um, insufficient. Uh, language skills and eloquence you know no one can do justice to the cosmological system um ever you you must have a spiritualized intuitive mind activated to at least be able to um attempt to conceive it and understand it you know, whereas some people would just jump off and, and say, oh, this is all nonsense, and rather they would um, rather subscribe to the consensus reality model of the globe because everybody else believes it and, and without any proofs or evidences. It's, it's simply ridiculous. So um, let me just get through a few more slides and then uh, I'll be able to expound on this much, much further. This is the Kabbalistic system, okay? Um, in the center here, you have the Earth. The Earth is Malkuth. It is the tenth sphere. It is the earthly plane. And above it, you see the, the seven rings starting from the moon and then going to Saturn. And then above Saturn is the firmament. That's what's the firmament. That's where the true firmament is. So in the first um, uh, slide we saw just prior to this one, this one here, um, you can see you can see the stars are first, and then above that they've got um, the moon, then Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and then there's nothing beyond that. And on top is the throne of God. Well, this is um, slight. This is wrong because those stars should be above Saturn. 
and this is the correct model okay so I'm offering this presentation this slide so that we can um, be able to conceive it in our mind's eye okay now Now, so the firmament is this starry abode here. Uranus is the ruler of that eighth sphere. And those are the fixed stars of the zodiac and all of the 48 um, uh, ancient fixed constellations. There are now um, 88 modern constellations, but the original ones were 48. All of those stars, they are all in the firmament. Okay, with the exception of a few stars, such as Sirius, um, Ursa Major, um, the Pleiades, probably the Orion system, and Canis Major. All right, so there are some exceptions, but 99% of the stars you see in the sky, they all belong to this um, sphere, the eighth sphere. And that's where the, the fixed stars are. And this sphere actually precesses. This is where precession occurs because it is um, not syncing with the sun's um, ecliptic. So in other words, on the 21st of March um, at the equinox, rather than the, star, um, the equinox pointing to Aries, it's now pointing to Aquarius. So we say that we are in the age of Aquarius. Well, that's because this particular firmament, this starry sphere, is precessing, okay? And and your sidereal astrologists, like your Jotish and Vedic astrologers, they use the stars in that sphere to denote the stars of the zodiac, whereas in the Western uh, tropical system, the constellations are actually on the ecliptic. And so those never precess. So the tropical system, which is what I'm teaching, and, and um, it's also biblical and uh, hermetic astrology, is um, based on the ecliptic, okay, the sine wave. Now, now, above the firmament is what's called the crystalline sea. This is the ninth sphere. And then above the crystalline sea, which is ruled by Neptune, it is a sphere of water, psychic water. And these are the waters above the firmament. So above the firmament, there is water. And below the earth, there is water. Okay? The earth is suspended by waters. And, and then above this ninth sphere is what's called the primum mobile, which means the first motion. So the first motion is, is fixed and firm, and so is the earth. That's why we call it terra firma. Terra firma means it is firm. It's not moving. Okay. And the scriptures do tell us that, um, that uh, the Lord cr uh, created the earth and firmly estab established its pillars. See, the earth is firmly established. Is that why we can't see uh, we can't see any movement of the northern star if we're in the northern hemisphere? Whenever we're at, around the North Pole, that it it never wavers. It always it, it's like, almost like the axis point. Exactly. That, that, yeah. It is the axis point. In fact, Polaris. Is directly abru directly abru <laughs> above <laughs> above Brahma's. That's what I was trying was trying to merge those two words. <laughs> um, above Brahma's um, uh, locale, you could call it, or loka, which is above that mountain in the centre of the North Pole. What we are going to learn, uh, Eilish, and, and we are going to understand from, from now on and forevermore is that the cosmos we live in is a beautiful creation of a very, very intelligent primal cause, the root cause of all causes. And in the West, we call that, you know, I don't know, Jehovah, Allah, Christ, 
in the East they call it Krishna. And um, this intelligence of beautiful form and, um, and omnipotence, omniscience and omnipresence is everywhere a conscious being permeating all of the universe. And this is, this is what we're going to learn. We're going to get away from the mechanical um, um, evolutionary uh, global model that we've, been in, uh, that we've inherited from the uh, sociopaths that have uh, created this false scarcity shortage um, energy shortage model of a um, of a ball, but we'll get to that. There's there's plenty of time for um, getting into that. I think um, uh, it is more important to establish the the roots of our cosmological system first. So here we see um, we see the scriptures. Sorry, sorry, Santos. Just a just a comment or a question. Um, from what I'm, the graphic I'm looking at, it reminds me very much of the Russian doll logos um, point of view that was written about um, by Dr. Joshua David Stone, in which um, there's, you know, for example, the logos, which is the soul that inhabits this body, and then the planetary logos, and then the um, solar logos, the galactic logos, and so forth. So almost like a, a and and um, that particular graphic that you're showing at the moment reminds me of of the the embodiment of the divine within the logos system, as in the series of Russian dolls example. Yes, yes, perfect. Um. You see, that um, sphere at the center called Earth, Earth is an anagram for heart. Yeah. It is always the core of the system. Core means heart. And so this is the, the Logos is the creator of these worlds. The Logos, Logos means word. Um, word in Latin is verb. Verb is vibrate, vibration. Vibration is sound. Reverberate, radiate. Now, what this is showing is that the Lord, by ever which name we wish to call him, Jehovah, Allah, uses energies called electricity to create material worlds. And the powerhouse which um, produces this vibratory force is magnetism, divine magnetism. And um, this force uh, of electricity is the, what's called the second creator, the Demiurgos, the god of matter, because it vibrates and it uses five different kinds of electricity. And the five different kinds of electricity um, are the same kinds that our body uses for the senses. Um, there are different. There is a different um, electrical circuitry in our nervous system for um, for eye, for vision, for sight, for the sense of sight, and there is um, different electricity used for smell, um, and for touch, and for um, for for hearing. So light works on the sight and vibration works on the sound. Now, usually um, the two most common forms of electricity are those two there. And so this is where the Logos becomes the creator through sound or the creator that produces through light. And so the sound that the creator uses is OM, OM or atom, and this is why the Egyptians say all is atom, and, and that is the sound of creation, and all theologies have, have this um, atomic, um, Adamic, um, God-like theology because it's all based on atomic electrical vibration, okay? So... Um, atom and Adam are, are etymologically similar too. 
Yeah, and notice you said etymologically, because what is etymology if not the science of atom? It's everything is the science of atom. So is your anatomy. <laughs> yeah. And so, and you will find, um, if you look at my presentations dealing with uh, atom, you will understand this. It's pretty clear because, because the ecliptic is called atom. The sine wave is called atom. That's and that's the big secret. That's the big, big secret that the that all sine waves are called atom. They are all atomic. So an atom is a sine wave. It's a thought wave universe. And so when you speak about the logos, you have the first logos, the first cause. Then you have the second expansion. So that would be uh, Krishna, and then he expands into um, Balarama, his brother. Uh, and it becomes Narayan or um, Vishnu or Mahavishnu. And then Mahavishnu is the creator of the all the worlds and then Brahma creates the physical worlds. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. But, um, but this is the Jewish Kabbalistic Hebrew system. Now, so you can see here these are the ten spheres and at the very, very top is the cause and the source of all of this. Above the rose, um, the red rose of the Rosicrucians, you see that um, golden pyramid, and it points upward to the um, the supernal um, empyrean. And so, outside of these ten conditions of these ten spheres in which we live, um, is the cause, um, the spiritual causes of these worlds, and that is the empyrean. And that is an unconditioned abode. And so out of that unconditioned abode comes all of these conditioned abodes that we, um, that we uh, witness. And we are living in one of those called the solar system. We call it a solar system. But it's a universe. We live in a universe unto itself, as, as we're going to see in a minute. And this is the Babylonian system. So you see a pyramid um, with ten spheres or ten steps uh, sorry, seven steps um, upward and seven steps downward. And in the middle is the um, 15th um, sphere or uh, you could call it a sphere, but it's a, it's a plane. It's a planet and, and that is the earth. Okay, so similar system. Um, here are some of the scriptures which, um, which really point to a flat earth and um, in the... In the in the Bible, uh, Isaiah is a good one here. Isaiah forty twenty two. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. And so, and um, other scriptures tell um, tell um, tell forth a lot of truth too. Joshua ten thirteen, where um, Joshua caused the um, asked the Lord to make the sun stand still. Well, here we, we, this myth and, and um, cosmology is teaching that, um, you know, the sun is in, has a trajectory. That's the, um, the hidden truth, the um, anagogic truth hiding behind these beautiful um, uh, allegories and uh, mythologies, you know. Um, here is another scripture which I, I really enjoy. Um, actually, if you go back to Isaiah, it says and continues saying, he stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Well, if you remember my uh, graphic of the um, tent-like TP structure in which the sun goes up to the Tropic of Cancer and um, very, very high up in the sky, and um, and then goes down the TP on an on an incline to the Tropic of Capricorn. Well, um, this um, contraction expansion vortex that the sun is creating is um, is this tent that is spread out, this tabernacle for the sun. And if you look at um, Psalms nineteen four, it says, "The heavens declare the glory of God. There is no speech." nor are their words, their voice is not heard. Their line, this is the ecliptic, has gone out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, 
which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run his course. So it shows there that the son is is um, truly marching along a um, uh, a circuit. It is making it is clearly it's making a circle in the sky. Now, here, if you spend some time here meditating on the analemma as it is superimposed upon the stereographic plane Earth, you will see how the um, analemma confirms and proves and is evidence of a flat Earth um, plane and um, a sun doing clockwise circles above the uh, Earth plane. Now, it is my opinion that um, that the circles that the sun is doing are not perfectly concentric, and I I believe that the sun is slightly off centered, which causes the um, the analemma shape in the sky. Otherwise, I believe that if it was concentric, the analemma would consist of a perfectly straight line. Yeah. Now, I might be wrong, there might be other explanations for this, but um, definitely, um, even with the ball Earth model, uh, there is, um, scientists know that the sun is further away from us at the Tropic of Cancer. In fact, they say it's about 3 million miles further away from, uh, from the Earth, the sun is, and it's, um, again, 4 or 5 million miles closer to the Earth at the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, these figures are totally, totally exaggerated because they assume and presume that the uh, sun is 93 million miles away from us, which, is, which it is not. And you can just um, uh, do simple tests to confirm that the sun's only a few thousand um, miles above our heads. So probably um, 4,000 miles, I don't know. Um, some say about 5,000, 5 or 6,000 miles. It's really interesting how uh, the um, you, you were saying that the sun travels clockwise, uh, that Mount Meru is in the centre. Uh, as, a, as a Buddhist practitioner, uh, we circumambulate the stupas, which are very much like uh, the Mount Meru when we make offerings, mandala offerings. We're actually building uh, a, a mandala in, and calling it Mount Meru. Uh, and we're circumambulating uh, when, we do, when we're on pilgrimage around stupas um, in this exact format. So we're looking at um, uh, the, the correlation between Vedic and Tibetan astrology or the yeah. Eastern philosophies in regards to the procession of the, of the sun around this, this plane of existence. Yeah, look, um, the, where people need to focus is on the ecliptic. And that's where I've always been pointing all the time in all of my presentations, regardless of the model which I've used, yeah. the erroneous Cop um, Copernican model. It, it matters not what shape the earth is for the sake of syncretism. Syncretism and the ecliptic are the stand on their own. They teach, um, they teach and they contain all of their own wisdom and knowledge just standing on their own merits. The ecliptic is the teacher of all things, the sine wave, as it is a thought wave universe. Everything is waves. And um, so this wave can be best studied um, through the ecliptic because it's, um, it's a fractal that is large enough for us to um, contemplate quite easily. For instance, we can begin at the start of the sine wave at March the 21st and we can go every day for a day along the year and we can have a look at all the holy days and we can see that they all occur along the ecliptic in harmony with the sun travelling up and down its tent-like incline upward to the Tropic of Cancer and downward to the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, take a look. If you've got a Christmas tree, Take a look. Um, uh, most people uh, listening will have a Christmas tree uh, standing somewhere in their homes. 
Have a look at the angle of that Christmas tree. Above the Christmas tree is always a five-pointed star. And, and um, the Christmas tree is basically telling us about the sun on its incline traveling up to the Tropic of Cancer. See, it's now at the bottom of the Christmas tree. It's at the very bottom. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it's right. Christmas Day is the 25th 5th of yeah. December, and it has to go from the bottom of the Christmas tree up to the Tropic of Cancer where Sirius, um, it, where the sun will be conjunct Sirius, its mother, um, in the Tropic of Cancer at the top of the Christmas tree. So you see, we already, the science is already in place. All we have to do is focus on the ecliptic, and the ecliptic will, will teach us all things. And this is why tropical, tropical astrology is um, uh, the foundation of all schools of astrology, all of them. All of them must bow down to tropical astrology because the ecliptic and the constellations on the ecliptic are more um, um, influential and um, powerful and the primary force of astrology in our solar system or solar cell. And so this is why it, um, it is always accurate in um, all of its um, applications. For instance, medical astrology um, is perfectly accurate in the tropical system. And also, um, when you look at the um, physiological features and characteristics of the, um, each particular sign, uh, you will see that um, they coincide only in the Western tropical system, whereas they are not correct. You, um, you cannot discern the uh, physical, facial features of a, uh, a sign, astrological sign, Using the um, sidereal system, it's it's out of it's out of sync, and I've proven that in my presentations. So here we have another uh, flat Earth um, graphic, and you see the analemma. Um, so you can see there very very clearly that um, the larger um, the larger portion of the analemma indicates that the sun is travelling much much uh, wider arced circles and much faster. It is actually, um, definitely covering more territory in the so-called Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. And there is the uh, analemma from the Northern Hemisphere perspective. If you went down to, say, Argentina and filmed the photograph, the analemma, um, for a year, uh, you would find that the loop is upside down. Again, again, showing the, confirming the, um, the equidistant azimuthal um, plane is uh, the correct one. Amazing. So I'll leave that for the uh, viewer to um, read. Um, here we have, again, another um, depiction you have a central um, magnetic uh, north uh, where you have beautiful fertile lands above the uh, Arctic Circle and um, where you're not allowed to go, of course. And then you see a serpent-like Ouroboros on the outside perimeter, and this is the Antarctic region. And you see the pancakes below the Earth, they seem to indicate um, uh, subterranean planetary systems. Is and that where Admiral Byrd went, do you think, brother? Yeah, look, um, I'm not quite sure about Admiral Byrd. Um, I tend to think that there might be more... Uh, co-opting with those types I don't um, I don't trust the guy at all um, you know he might have been the youngest general or whatever and very intelligent but um, you know I, I just watch the man talk and I just don't trust him uh, I believe they are just um, he was just there to um, you know dramatize 
the uh, mineral and um, the material uh, wealth of Antarctica and the uh, Arctic regions just to sort of give um, more uh, authority to, um, to so-called governments to protect those areas and keep us away from there and national security and blah, blah, blah and all of this rot. Um, I think they just um, schemed it up all along. Um, but, yes, I do believe that um, it is somewhere in those regions we have access to the inferior worlds and this is where all your um, so-called aliens and, I don't know, reptilians, greys, um, ETs are coming from. Uh, they won't be coming from other universes, as I will we'll be showing um, in a couple of minutes. They'll be coming from um, below and not from above. So here we've got uh, the city of Brahma, just above the central magnetic mountain. Um, in a dome-like structure. I don't believe it's it's like a, um, a physical dome. I think it's a luminous dome, um, just as the... Energy dome. Energy dome, you say. Yeah. yeah, well, it's all energy. I mean, even the Earth is just... Um, it's is a luminous body. It's just we call it solid and dense because it's dense light. But the moon is of a different quality of... Um, of light um, and it's not solid like ours the earth is what we call terrestrial but none of the planets are terrestrial mars is not terrestrial they can't send probes there and to you know <laughs> stroll around on the planet they're not going to mars they're actually going to subterranean places and and they're lying and and, and mars is not millions and millions <laughs> you know, one billion miles away. They're just a few thousand miles up and they're stars or rather they are luminous bodies. They are also demigods, archons, um, the demiurgos. They are the body of the demiurgos, the demiurge. They are, they are the composite of Jehovah. They are one of Krishna, Krishna's expansions. Um, there's many ways to describe them, but they are definitely not terrestrial and you can't go and, you know, physical <laughs> astronauts, you can't go there. For a start, they're not qualified. You know, um, the Hindus teach that uh, only qualified beings can go to the moon and the spheres after the moon. So only the rishis get to go there. Now, so at the bottom of this plane here, we see uh, Jambudweep. Jambudweep is the, um, the flat point from where all of um, our Earth extends from this central point here. And, of course, this is Mount Meru, Mount Sumeru, Samaria, Moriah, uh, Zion, um, uh, Sinai, the Olympus. This is all the sacred mountains, guys. It's all Mount... Yeah magnetic mountain in the center of the earth the earth plane and so here we have the path of the sun again you see the small red circle is cancer tropic of cancer and and this is why please remember that all the ancients said that souls come in the gate of the um, gate of men at the tropic of cancer and they leave Souls leave the solar system at the Tropic of Capricorn, which is called the Gate of the Gods. So keep that in mind when you see, when you envision this tent-like structure in which the sun goes up on a ramp to the Tropic of Cancer and down the ramp, ram, lamb, lamb of God, <laughs> um, down to the Tropic of Capricorn. And so it is a ramp, and um, as it goes, as it contracts, up to the Tropic of Cancer, souls come into this um, cell. They filter down from the um, Milky Way galaxy, as Plato describes it, and then they come through all the rings, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. Then they come to the heart, Earth, same word. And then as the sun expands and it goes, and, and sorry, as it, um, yeah, expands 
as it um, climbs down the ramp from the Tropic of Cancer. It um, souls um, leave this plane from the Tropic of Capricorn. Here is an artist's impression of all the worlds, and as you will see there, there is a central tree, the Yggdrasil tree, where um, this toroidal field emanates from, and the plane projects outwardly probably um, ad infinitum. We have no idea, but there's probably, um, you know, beyond Antarctica, there's probably other um, dome-like um, cell uh, structures which are called universes, and um, they project forever on a plane, or perhaps it's finite, and um, and it has, you know, um, a um, a term terminal point. And so, but nonetheless, what you're going to see is how the universe is created by the root cause of all causes and how um, these material worlds are drawn back in again in, um, in one of the in-breaths of either Vishnu or Brahma. And it's really, um, it's really interesting, you know, looking at the birth and the death of Jesus, Horus, Dionysus, uh, Attis, Adonis, all the sun gods, we're seeing the same story over and over again where, um, you know, the... The, as you as you were talking before, it reminded me of the you know the birth and the death of this sun god. Yep, yep. And the sun um, the sun dies uh, when it reaches the tropic of Canc uh, Capricorn. It actually dies each time it passes a tropical point. In fact, um, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. But Capricorn is the nastiest one. Um, from the projection or from the uh, vantage point of the um, people who live in the Northern Hemisphere in particular because, um, you see, that brings the cold weather which is cruel and um, which is Saturnian and, and Saturn is Satan and so Saturn rules the winter, you see. And so, of course, yesterday was St. Tom's Day. Well, Tom is... Um, is Saturn, you know, it's um, all of these um, dualistic gods who bring uh, heat and cold. And so uh, along the ecliptic, um, all of the sacred days that um, are close to the equinoxes and solstices um, all have to do with Tom and Thomas. Very interesting, isn't it? It is. So without syncretism, you can never really um, fathom uh, the complete picture of um, the uh, ancient cosmologies. You, you just you have to embrace all of the um, all of the uh, theologies and sciences. So, mm -hmm. so what we have here, this is very cle clever artistic depiction of how the um, Taurus field centering this um, these two um, um, electrically charged. Um, uh, dome-like um, structures. The, you see the blue above and the red below. Red always depicts um, infernal, hellish realms, and blue is always sky, heaven, um, god-like, and and sort of more to do with a consciousness and and um, and I guess um, the spiritual nature of things whereas red is usually depicting physical um, um, the physical material world um, please keep this graphic in mind because this one is very 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 telling uh, and notice the tor the torus field in the center of these two domes mm. um, yeah this is how this is how it truly is it it has to be like this as you will see in a minute um, so this is what's going on, uh, Eilish. You see here, you see the Idrisal tree, okay? You see galaxies in the shape of an apple, in the shape of a an earth. They've put, a, they've put a globe in here erroneously, but you get the point. It's the core. It's the middle. And then they've put a man in here. They've put an apple in here. Well, what this is all about is Taurus fields. You see, because the original word for the bull was apis. 
And apples, apis is the root of Apollo, the apples wow. of Apollo. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is what an apple is. It's a bull. It's a torus field. You see the, the, um, the core of the apple, the heart of the apple, the heart of the tree, the heart of the human being. It's the core, the cardiac, the heart, the torus. And so this word apis, apple, Apollo, arbor, you see, this is why an, 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 a tree is an arbor. Well, that arbor is really just an anagram for abra. Ab is ap. Ap and, and ab are interchangeable. And so this is why you always have Krishna, the Lamb of God, is always playing with his cows, you see, yeah. or tauruses. And he creates wow. the tauruses with his flute, you see. He just mm. plays with his flute and he creates worlds. Mm. This is the, the first logos you were talking about before because the world is created with vibration, whether it's the electricity of sound or whether it's the electricity of sight or smell. But, um, but they are electrical forces. They are vibratory um, fields of toroidal fields. And the sine wave is wrapped around these little tauruses, these little cows, okay, yeah. or apples. You can call them apples. You can call them Apollos. You can, pull, you can call them Saturns. This is what Saturn's rings are doing. They're not rings, really. They're, they're energy emanation. They're just fields of energy going outwardly in its torus field because below the rings will be a red, um, the red portion of that um, – uh, energy and then above Saturn's rings will be the blue. Yeah. Here we have um, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration um, the Research Centre, um, the Army's Research Centre and Dryden Flight Research Facility. And in uh, point three of the concluding remarks of this report, they say um, this report derives and defines a set of linearized system matrices uh, for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Now, so why would they, you know, train pilots in this, um, you know, uh, non-rotating Earth model? Um, you know, it's tantamount to putting square wheels, square training wheels on your um, your um, children's um, bicycles to train them with square wheels so that they can ride better later with um, um, circular wheels uh, when they, um, you know, uh, graduate from square wheels. You know, it doesn't make sense. Flip-flopping from um, glo globular gravitational um, spheres to flat, non-rotating plane is totally, I mean, can you imagine the havoc of flip-flopping between these two systems? Obviously, there is only one system, and, and that, as, um, as um, um, exposed here and um, admitted by the, this um, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, there's only one model, and that's the flat Earth non-rotating. And so um, this picture here is very handy to um, explain the vanishing point. Uh, and so from the viewer's um, viewpoint, uh, vantage point, they would see everything in the, um, on the flat Earth, they would see it disappear on the horizon, no matter how big it is. And no matter whether it's, um, you know, um, a luminous body like the sun, it will set, uh, quote, unquote, set because... It has to vanish um, as it gets further away. And so um, this, this argument of, of the sun setting and it appears to go over the horizon and under is um, totally, totally erroneous and it's, um, it is a truth of appearances. It's not an absolute truth. So, but um, to absolutely prove that the sun is circling above a flat plane, um, all you need to do is go up in a jet. And these days, they are kind enough to take you up to about 45,000 feet, I believe. <laughs> and so 
what you will see um, when you look out the left window and the right window is that the horizon comes up to your eye level. Yeah. And no matter how big the circumference, they say the circumference of the Earth is 25,000 um, miles. Now, even if it was 250 million miles in circumference, you would not see the horizon at 50, 45,000 feet in altitude come up to your eye level. You simply wouldn't see that. You would see a falling away or at it, least... That's right. It would, there would be a drop-off point where you just wouldn't see buildings anymore, tall buildings. It's, no. I, I, find it, I find it remarkable. I live in Geelong and from where I live on the hill... I look over the bay and I can see the high rises in Melbourne across the bay, in Port Phillip Bay. And if we were living on a, on, a, on a ball earth, those buildings that I see across the water, across a, quite a big bay, uh, would, I wouldn't be able to see them, you know. Um, that those buildings would have fallen away. But I see them across the water and and mm, some people might say oh yes but that's because we're on a really big globe but there, there's uh, you know and, and i've been watching a lot of eric dubai's arguments about this about the distance and about how buildings should start looking like they're on an angle because you know you, you you're dipping over the edge and you never see that they're always straight and you can see them no matter how far you go just with a telescope you know yeah exactly um yeah there's been some shenanigans going on in the media with um photographs of chicago clearly seen a hundred miles across the lake michigan and um you can actually see the whole skyline all of it not just the tops of the buildings um, you can see it all of it and it actually ramps up you can see in the picture that the Chicago skyline actually ramps up to your eye level there's no falling away at all and so this is the marvelous thing how is it that people in the city of Genova in Italy can actually see Corsica 99 miles away and the island of Elba um, 125 miles away now that should be about 8,000 feet below the level and yet you're sitting in a cafe in Geneva and you can just see the whole island of Elba rising up like a ramp to your horizon you can sit there and drink coffee and just watch it and and supposedly we're we're li living on a globe with a circumference of 25,000 miles man you can you should be able to see um you should be able to see arc and drop off with the imperfect eyesight that we have as humans um we should be able to see it just within eye shot anywhere anywhere now when i go um driving around in the um in the mountains here near the ocean uh, i can see ocean for hundreds of miles and um, it's all the whole skyline is flat and it ramps up to my eye level and i'm on the mountains i'm standing on the mountains and i can see flat earth ramping up to my um, eye level 360 degrees around me now let's continue on um, here we have uh, Mahavishnu or Narayan, um, the four-armed version of Krishna, uh, dreaming and from his um, navel a lotus stem uh, comes forth and he creates all these bubbles, all these universes where um, his um, uh, causal uh, energy is um, distributed in in expansions um infinitely through the universe and so what we have here is we have um a creative process and this is what i'm going to in a minute we're going to go back to this chart here um eilish can you see this yep you can okay well what we have here um 
what we have here is um, the Vedic system and the pink lotus at the very, very top. This is the causal um, world, uh, as you can see. Uh, that's Krishna's abode. That's called um, Vrindavan. And then below that, there's um, a middle white portion. That's the white light. That's the effulgence of the creator, the prime creator. And that's what's called Brahma Jyoti. And that's the white light of the creator. And so that separates the spiritual um, superior world from the um, inferior uh, physical world below. And this is where we are. We live in one of these bubbles, one of these spheres. So we live inside a sphere. And what we're going to do uh, um, later is we're going to have a look at this here. Can you see where my cursor is? Yep. Right. Well, um, in the middle of these, these are 15 planets and um, seven of them are um, heavenly planets and hence um, subtle and those are moon through Saturn. And then in the middle is the Earth um, and that is gross and subtle. And then below us are seven planes called the gross planets. And um, this is a universe. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that. And so this explains why the ancients um, are always creating dome-like structures for their um, religious edifices. Because what they, they are doing is they are um, mimicking or copying the heavens. You see, these are... These are resembling the nature of the spiritual world around us and how the physical world is an effect of it. These are symbols. And notice how some of these domes, the artwork inside them, like the Sistine Chapel, has um, all of the account of creation. And you'll be surprised to see that um, the account is very scientific. It's very cosmological and mythological. And you need to understand how to interpret the um, the artwork of the likes of Michelangelo. You cannot um, interpret these literally. There's no literal rendition that will um, give justice to these beautiful um, works of art. But um, I would like to tackle that one day myself and um, show um, show the true story of creation and how it is. Here is um, how this dome-like structure is perceived by the, um, the alchemists. The uh, firmament is the sphere in which we have to leave to become enlightened and illumined because outside of that sphere there is no sunshine. There is a different kind of light. It's a superior light. So the disclosure with the Truman Show... And even even terms like the Thunderdome, you know, like in Hollywood, there's there's disclosure. These are the oh yeah, and we've seen nut there or nut there. Uh, these are all disclosures revealing the nature of what we're living in—a disc dome or a disc um, flat disc with a, within a sphere, as you said. Yep. Yep. See, the goddess Nut, the starry dome, had to be held up. Um, what that's showing is that there are forces at work to keep our cosmos functioning, you know, and those forces are called nitas, which we call natural, which we call the gods. And so... All this so-called worship of the gods is not actually worship of the gods at all. It is worship through the gods to worship one god. And that one god is a trinity. Um, you will always see a trinity of gods, Isis, um, Osiris, and Horus. Or you will see um, Krishna, Balaram, and Radharani. Or you will see, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this, 
This is a divine, sacred secret. Many people, <coughs> excuse me. Or Shiva, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva the, in the Hindu tradition. Yep, exactly. And so, but notwithstanding it being a trichotomy god, it is still one god. And it is, a, it is a god of person and a god of form. It has spiritual form. You see, some people say, oh, God is fo formless. God is white light. No, no, that's, that's God's, God's effulgence. But behind the effulgence is a person, a form with, um, with um, qualities, love, um, endless love, uh, justice wisdom, knowledge, wealth, abundance, and is the fountain and source of all things in all potencies. And there is nothing lacking in that person, you see. And we are of that person. We are units, uh, deific units of that person. We are atoms. Uh, yes, we are atoms. All is atom. So we are Adamites. Of course we are Adamites because we have an anatomy, an atomy <laughs> made of atoms. And so and so in order us in order for us to be persons with individuality, um, there has to be a source causal person. And and and, and for us to have a form, you see we we look at this body and we think we are the body, but we are not. We have a spiritual form which causes this form. And so it's that so-called formless part of us which manifests this, um, this form, physical form that we see. And so um, continuing, continuing on with the slides because I wanted to get I want to get back to that graphic. How much time do we have remaining there, um, Eilish? Uh, we've got half an hour, Santos. Mm -hmm. And um, some viewers were wondering if they could call in, but finish your presentation first, and then if we have time, uh, we yeah, can yeah. answer questions. Yeah, we can do that. I'm nearly finished. So there's the UN flag. Um, there's a lot of symbolism here, guys. A lot of symbolism here. And unfortunately, a lot of half-cocked so-called truthers um, are going out there saying that the Flat Earth um, movement is a psyop by the Jesuits and they're trying to sell us a flat world order and um, so forth. They're, um, they're half-cocked and... Um, they need to do their research properly, and they need syncretism, you know, quite frankly. Um, the PSYOP is the ball, and it's been around since the fifth, uh, early 1500s, and that is the only PSYOP that is keeping us in a, um, in a prison, um, in a cult of um, shortage and uh, scarcity um, uh, worshippers. Um, these these creatures that in government that um, subscribe to these shortage um, uh, notions, they are controlled by the demonic forces from the planes below our earth. That's where yeah. that's where the, that's where they're coming from, man. Those guys down there, they want to control what goes on on our planet because we're supposed to be in paradise. We're supposed to be enjoying paradisical conditions and brotherly love and bliss and you know well you can't have perfect bliss on planes you on planets you can only have bliss on spiritual planets there's there is no bliss pure bliss on any material planets in the universe period so there's your santa so ball the sorry yeah. they're topping from the bottom they're dominating yeah. beneath us yeah. Santa so, Ball. Yeah, the Santa Ball. So what I want to do now um, is the last thing I want to do is go to my graphic here. Uh, gee, 
Where did I go? Where did it go? Uh, just go back. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Let's do it this way. All right. What I want to do now is finish with this, and then we can do questions and answers. And so. The middle portion here, um, Eilish, this is the white light where the um, Maya Davies go. And a Maya Davi um, is, is uh, someone who preaches um, to that, that all, is, all is one, um, God is light, white light, and and they teach that we can actually merge with that light and be in bliss forever in that white light. Well, you know, that's that's true. It is very true, but it's um, it's not the absolute truth. And the absolute truth is that beyond the white light, there is um, there is a being, there is a uh, a person in which um, there is a spiritual world totally separate um, from this world in which we live. Where activity can um, can happen forever in one mode of time, and uh, which is the forever present, the forever now. So this is the forever world of now, and um, outside of that world, below the um, Brahmananda or Brahmajyoti world here in the middle, is um, the inferior worlds, and that's what I want to do. I want to expand on that and go down in there and have a look at what's going on in there. So basically what you can see down the bottom here is you can see um, Vishnu is dreaming up um, this world uh, through his his navel and the lotus that is growing. And what you have here is... Navel his gazing. Umbilic Sorry? Navel gazing. Yeah, yeah. Look, because they, in the spiritual world... Um, the senses uh, are intermingled. You see, in the physical worlds, um, we can only see with our eyes. We can't see with our ears. You know, we can't hear with our eyes mm. and vice versa, versa. You know, each energy is specialised and we, um, we can only, um, in the Kali Yuga, we can only use um, um, the organs for one sense, you see. Whereas in the Korea, in the um, uh, spiritual world, there um, the senses um, can perform all the other functions of all the other senses, and so uh, to create is merely um, a wish. It's merely a dream, and so Vishnu, Mahavishnu, um, creates this expansion. And you see here we have uh, virtually we have Brahma's world now. And this is the world of two octaves, okay? So what you will see here in this world um, is you will see the earth is in the middle. They've yeah, actually got yeah. it de depicted here as a sphere, which um, yeah. hopefully will be corrected very, very soon because the, um, the Vedic people and the Hare Krishnas are um, uh, very, very conscious and um, very... Uh, knowledgeable of the transcendental science so and what this is this is the middle planet okay this is the uh, the heart chakra of the whole system if you like and mm -hmm. uh, above us are the higher planets uh, which are subtle and you'll notice that the very highest pl planet is called Sat Satyaloka well that Sat that is actually Saturn same word as Saturn and then, of course, um, you'll remember the first graphic I showed you in the Kabbalistic s system. Um, this is Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mercury, Moon. And then here is the Earth plane. And then underneath this plane, there are seven uh, lower planets. And yeah. the, lowest, the lowest planet here... Um, this is uh, pa Patala, and this is the. These are the hellish planets, and um, yeah. the, 
the amount of pleasure in these uh, realms is very, very limited. It's much more limited than what we should have on our Earth, although um, the creatures who come from Atala and Vitala and Sutala um, and who pretend to be uh, kind, loving aliens from other worlds, uh, they're actually controlling our planet so much to the point that we, uh, our level of uh, bliss has been severely diminished. And so um, what, what is happening is these uh, is like these um, planets are all swimming in their own waters as the Earth is, uh, cosmic waters, and they are all planes um, equally as large as our Earth and they are below our Earth. And basically life graduates from here and gets to incarnate on our planet. And then from there, we take on the heroic um, nature. We become uh, a Hebrew or a Jew in the um, Kabbalistic system. In the Greek system, we become a hero. Um, in the um, um, Vedic system, we become a demigod, or we, you know, we take on their um, their energy. And so, as you go up higher, um, to get to get out of these this this bubble, these uh, sphere like um, worlds, uh, we need to ex escape, basically, and um, that's what the churches are supposed supposedly there for us there, to do to help us to escape from these material planes. So if you go to the Hari Krishnas, they will teach you that if you chant the Maha Mantra, which is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, 16 words, um, you will go to Krishna Loka. You will not go to the white light and you, where you will enjoy. Um, so... Oh, let me show you what they call it. See, they call that Brahmananda, which is called the all-pervading impersonal bliss. So most of you... Um, go on. It's also, a model, it's also a perfect model of samsara, the Buddhist version of what we're talking about here. The, this is a finite uh, system, um, both with upper realms and lower realms, um, it, but they're all... They, they do have a finite quality to them and it's the nirvanas, the, the higher universes um, of, of the omniverse that we, we need to aspire to. So this is still the, the, the multi-dimensions of suffering and, in, and impermanence that we're having a look at here on this universal model of the, of the flat planes. Um, of existence, but then we can reach higher realms, and this is what the the Buddhist masters teach too. So go on, Santos. It's just it's correlating a lot with other Eastern philosophies I've studied. Absolutely, it must correlate because that's what syn syncretism does. It correlates and sees the interrelatedness of all things, and so um, the the beautiful worlds of opulence and sweetness to which we um, aspire and um, we um, long for our soul is longing to be reunited with our you know creator or or with the the beautiful world from which um, all other worlds emanate from our, the 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 bliss the place of bliss and 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 there are there are different regions and and uh, grades of bliss that we can enjoy um, in that world, but we must escape the material world. So, the Brahma Jyoti is everything above Brahma Jyoti. From Brahma Jyoti upward is blissful, and it is what the Hindus call Sat Chit Ananda, Vigraha. So, Sat means um, existence, and and that's the root of Saturn, Sat S A T. Yep. It's, it's the root of the word truth and existence. And so time, 
existence is time and Saturn is old man Kronos. So um, every, there, is, there is existence and chit means um, uh, knowledge or consciousness and so there is consciousness and ananda means bliss. So everything from Brahmajyoti upward and you'll notice that the kingdoms above Brahmajyoti, uh, notice this word here. What's that word there? Aish, Aishvarya Dham. You see that word Dham? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. spelled D-H-A-M-A. -A. You don't yeah. pronounce the you don't pronounce the last A. So you've got Dham. That is Adam. Okay. Oh, Adam. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, and this is. Um, Predominated, predominated by Krishna's opulence, and um, and this is like um, the throne of God, and this is where people go, like your church, your good churchgoers who want to go beyond the white light and who want to worship God, and so there's a place where you can go where you can actually worship and be a worshipful, a worshipful being, individual, forever worshiping God in bliss. And then above that is the highest of all worlds, and it's and it's a more personal world where um, the the true person of God is, and that place is called um, you can <clears throat> you can see here Madura Dam. So this is the highest Adam. This is you know the first uh, Logos, as you were speaking about before, and that is. Um, this is a world predominate, predominated by sweetness. And in that world, you can have three forms of love for the creator. You can have brotherly love, brotherly or sisterly. You can have fatherly love, fatherly or motherly. And um, the highest of all loves that you can express for the supreme being is conjugal. And so this is why the alchemists talk about the alchemical marriage, yeah. the, alche the alchemical wedding, um, because we can be wed with the supreme being. We can be we can be the wife or the husband of that being, and that being yeah. is not is not necessarily masculine or femi feminine. It is um, it is above these. Um, these uh, categorizations. It is Krishna is always with Radha, Radharani, his his wife, mother, consort, goddess, lover, mm -hmm. and so where there is one, there is always two. Where there is two, there is always three. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and so, um, this this world, the highest world, is where Bhagavan exists, and Bhagavan is God, the personal. And below God, the personal is Paramatma, and Paramatma is a mixture of personal and impersonal, the super soul of the universe. And then below that is Brahman, and um, and that is the impersonal effulgence of um, the Creator, and that's where people can live um, forever without their individuality. They all are absorbed into the One, yeah. and and where they can they. Um, they uh, enjoy what is called here, quite appropriately, I think, um, the all-pervading impersonal bliss. So there's no activity there. There is no action. Whereas, um, personally, I aspire, I aspire to go to the top. You know, um, I would rather be active. Yeah. And so there's just a brief... Um, you know, a brief view of the uh, ancient cosmology and uh, and how they all tie in with um, the flat Earth plane, and um, it's easy to see that we've been hoodwinked, uh, Eilish. We've been um, we've been put on a um, a false um, uh, projection, a false uh, plane, in order to control us, and uh, through through shortages. So um, if we understand that there are worlds beyond and universes and each pocket of, of uh, known um, worlds is actually a universe unto itself. 
So our solar cell, our solar system, whatever you want to call it, is um, is a universe. It's 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 spherical inside, and in the very very heart of it is a plane, um, and it's um, strung out like a you know um, like a musical instrument. Uh, there are seven tones below, which make an octave, a diatonic octave, and there are seven planets, so called, above, which make another diatonic octave. And again, the number 16 uh, prefigures in all of our theologies the 16 um, words of the Maha Mantra, um, the 16 petals of the throat chakra. Uh, it's just uh, the degrees of the width of the analema at the top is 16 and then 32 doubled at the bottom. And so what we have here is the true cosmology is coming back. And so we're going to open our eyes as to where we live and we are going to um, neutralise the liars uh, by taking away their pet favourite uh, psyop lie um, and pull the carpet from under their feet. And you watch and see how that is going to um, change uh, politics forever in our little universe politics for sure because it it, um, it suggests a divine intelligent creator and that's what they don't want they don't want to see us aspire to go beyond the dome into what's beyond the dome you know well it's more sinister than that um, our souls are eternal and the bodies are not. The body dies. And if you could watch the life of your body through a time-lapse video camera, all you would see was a, a very, very healthy torus field at the start of your life when you were young. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a, um, <coughs> some kind of a pollen thing happened today. My nose is really, really extremely itchy. Mm -hmm. I've been scratching it for about two hours now. Um, and so, uh, what was I saying? Sorry. Um, it's you were saying it's more sinister than that. Oh yeah. Okay. Let me sort all this sneezing stuff out. Um, our souls are eternal, and our souls qualify to go to the highest of the abodes. You see, Jesus said, "In my Father's mansion, there are in my Father's." Um, house there are many many mansions um, we don't have to go to the void as some uh, voidists and nihilists are teaching <clears throat> they are teaching that there is no god no creator no soul no birth no death it's all an illusion and then when your life your body goes to the grave you go back to the void these these are truths but they are half truths and why should we buy into it, into them when we can have absolute truth? And absolute truth is easy to get. You just have to do research, study. You just have to be not lazy. That's all you have to do. And you can find absolute truth. It's, it's, it's there. Uh, and, you, and you can do this quite easily with a sincere heart and a reasonable amount of intelligence that you bring to the table. And the absolute truth is that our souls are the same in quality and substance as the prime creator, Krishna, Allah, Jehovah. And qualitatively, we are God. We are the same as God, but not quantitatively. So our source is from the highest source, and we qualify by good virtuous acts and deeds to go to the highest places and live in sweetness and opulence immortally 
um, forever in bliss, in pure bliss, unconditioned bliss. And we don't even have to, and we don't even have to um, be content with going to the white light as the monists teach. The monist will teach you, and a lot of these gurus kicking around these days, they're all teaching this, you are God, you are all that is and all that ever was and all that is will be and and you will go back to God the light and merge with him and be with him and that's basically spiritual suicide and that's fine you know I mean people want to do that they don't want to be active they don't want to have activity they want to um, you know merge with the one the impersonal Holy Spirit force of the Creator and stay there and um, they may even do that, you know, they may do that forever uh, or they may um, stay there for um, infinite amounts of time and then um, revert back to um, an active, um, more, um, well, active worship uh, um, and activity toward the, the creator. So the Brahmajoti white light, this, this is for people who... Um, who want to have a neutral love for the Creator? You know, they don't want to have any kind of um, you know activity. They they know um, uh, the Creator. They love the Creator, but it's a neutral love. And so, the the truth that is being um, held uh, from us is this particular truth that we can. Um, choose consciously uh, where we want to go forever and um, by keeping us on a ball that um, evolved uh, through materialistic mechanisms and causes um, we now have a, a really a, a purely atheistic uh, construct which does not um, acknowledge any sort of causal influence um, on this on this construct and um, which is you know uh, which is totally um, uh, unacceptable and um, you know ca causes them to go around theorizing in circles forever and um, always you know acquiring knowledge but never coming to an accurate knowledge of truth so um, the true model of the flat plane it really settles all of the um, all of the um, endless arguments about gravity and it's you know it's going to go on forever and ever because it simply doesn't exist. Um, it's rather the laws of density and buoyancy which have always been there and which we've always contemporaneously um, uh, enjoyed and subscribed to um, at the same time as we. Um, commit a, a, a practice of um, cognitive dissonance and subscribe to the gravity ball um, erroneous model. So it's interesting that we can have so, so much cognitive dissonance and that we, um, we, the truth is still there. You know, we, we know that um, on the flat earth the laws of um, density and buoyancy uh, and um, electromagnetism uh, rule and yet we default to um, what's been drilled into us through education, um, uh, through erroneous means and pseudoscience, and um, we flip-flop through um, the, both of them. And it's just quite incredible how uh, when you study and research this subject, you'll find that on the one hand there is no evidence, no facts, no proofs, and no truths, and on the other side, um, weighing in favour of the flat earth, there is only evidence, only proof, only facts and only truths. So, um, you know, it's a done deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm happy that um, I've married syncretism uh, with the flat earth model now. And uh, for the intelligent ones, I've noticed that not many intelligent people want, um, ask, um, oh, how does that now work with syncretism and the models that you've used in the past in your presentations? Surely now that, you know, you can't explain any of that. And um, I, I don't get any intelligent people um, asking those questions because they know, as I know, uh, and as I've always teach, taught, <laughs> um, 
and and teach you my presentation that um, that everything comes from the ecliptic. And so um, I've explained how the ecliptic is produced. It's more correct than the um, ludicrous uh, ball um, Santa ball buffoon um, theory. And yeah. so now that's all you have to do. Uh, basically, you can still watch uh, all of my presentations, and all you have to do is um, have the the true model in your mind, and your intelligence will help you to see that it all still works well, perfectly. We, all right. Thank you, Santos. We have to go now. Thank you so oh. much for your time. Yep. Um, yeah, and thank you to CCN. We'll see you again next week on We Are The Ones We've Been Waiting For. Thank you. The pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world should be the focus of every person on our planet. The reason it is not is because people are kept distracted by the illusions and deceit propagated by the corporately controlled mainstream media. In recent years, the rise in truly informed, savvy researchers and journalists who have all taken to the air in various capacities has given rise to a new genre of media. We have seen the explosion of truly free and independent media and thus the need to create an ethical live broadcast network that facilitated these brave and tireless souls became apparent. With a great amount of research and meticulous planning, Conscious Consumer Network was created. CCN is a first of its kind broadcast network that is specifically dedicated to free and independent media with absolutely no government control corporate sponsorship or advertising. The live broadcast network runs full time with an average of 25 shows and live broadcasts a week. The high definition live stream is free to view and is accessible from any computer terminal with online access, including laptops, tablets, smartphones and smart TVs. All shows are archived onto YouTube and are freely available to view in order to educate and inform as many as we can without imposing monetary limitations. CCN was successfully launched on the 1st of January 2015 and has gone from strength to strength as we have improved and increased the capacities and functionalities of the network as well as an ever-rotating and improving lineup of content which is broadcast daily. CCN is blessed to be the home of some of the hardest hitting, most cutting edge, truly educational and informative materials. Catch interviews, reviews and talk shows from the many different and beautiful perspectives from CCN's family of interviewers and broadcasters. Since the 1st of January 2015, we have produced over 800 shows. We have over 2 million YouTube minutes watched every month and we have an average of a million hits a day on CCN's website. CCN is viewed in over 147 different countries and hosts broadcasters from five different continents. The time has now come to generate funding to keep CCN on the air for the duration of 2016. The total sum needed to continue broadcasting for 2016 is $60,000. This budget includes the replacement of computer equipment, the acquisition of secure servers, which are most needed as we keep getting hacked, plus the renewal of the broadcast license fee for 2016. This is a fraction of the annual budget used by mainstream media networks producing a similar quantity of content. This is what makes CCN so successful, unique and accessible, is the ability to run a project of this size and reach on such minimal resources. CCN does not claim ownership over any of the material we produce and broadcast as we firmly believe that information is the common heritage of all beings and thus CCN belongs to you, the public, and it is up to you all to keep CCN going. CCN would like to thank those who have contributed to the network in the past with resources, content, information, time and energy. We thank you for supporting free and independent media.